Hi, this is Brian with ActiveMelody.com. Well, for this week's guitar lesson, I wanted to come up with something that works for just about anyone, whether you're an absolute beginner, or you're an advanced player, or anywhere in that spectrum. I wanted to have something that had some interesting material uh, for you, and so I came up with this real dark sounding acoustic lead. It's kind of a bluesy thing, although this works on electric guitar as well, so either guitar is going to sound great. But it's easy to play. There's not a lot of uh, technical stuff going on. There's a lot of space between the notes. It's very slow. And because of that, it allows me to break it down and explain where all the notes come from. I'll connect them back to chords that you already know and scales that you already know so that you can start to improvise and write your own music in this style. And that's really my goal for you in this. Not necessarily just to memorize this, but to get into the headspace of it so that you can start to, to go there when you want to or if you want to. So normally I take these lessons and I split them into two videos. This week, however, we're going to do everything in this one video uh, because it just didn't make sense to split it up. Uh, however, if you're a premium member and you want to access the slow walkthrough video and the tablature and the MP3 jam track so that you can practice playing along, you can get all of those things by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page, and do a search for EP282. All right, so let's talk about the structure of this song. Believe it or not, there's only two chords that are being used. There's a B minor chord and a G chord. And we go back and forth between that minor chord and the major chord to get this composition. Uh, it sounds like there's a lot more going on, but when you analyze it, it's just those two chords. Now, a lot of what gives it that feel, though, is what we're playing on top of those chords to kind of color it. So the, I'm starting off with a strum pattern uh, with a B minor chord that goes like this. Very simple, very slow. I'm not going to get into this, the rhythm for this lesson. We're going to get into the notes that we're going to play on top of that. Now I've thought about different ways about that, that I could break this down, uh, but I wanted to make it something very simple and very usable, something that you can start to apply right away. You don't have to sit and study anything. And so what we're going to do is we're going to be playing off this chord shape, this B minor chord shape. I'm going to show you a set of notes that you can use that you can connect to this chord shape so that you can play these anytime you're playing a minor chord using this chord shape. Now what is this chord shape? This is using, this is an A minor chord shape. Even though we're playing a B minor chord, we're using the A minor chord shape. So if you think of an A minor down in first position and you walk that up two frets and then you bar, you capo here on the second fret with your finger, you're playing a B minor chord using the A minor chord shape. Check out EP275 if you want more information on that. It's the caged system using minor chords. I go over that in that lesson. Um, okay, so if we look at this chord shape now and we look at where our middle finger is, take the other fingers off, your middle finger will be playing the third fret, second string. So you can remember that out of that chord shape. Now we're going to walk down and I'm going to show you five or four extra notes you can add to this. So we're going to play 3rd fret, 2nd string, 2nd fret, 2nd string. We're going to go down to the 4th fret, 3rd string, 2nd fret, 3rd string. And then we're going to go down to the 4th fret, 4th string. So we have... Now look at those notes and co connect it back to this chord shape. It's very easy to do if you start with your middle finger there because that's already in the chord. And that's, even with just those five notes, you can do a lot. So if you learn nothing else in this lesson, you can walk away with this. So if you were playing something in D minor, for example. You've got those notes to start working into your solos. And it's easy to play them because you can find them right off that chord shape. So let's go uh, back to our uh, B minor. We're going to learn a few extra notes to add to that. So now we're going to make a little extension on that. So we're going to go back to that 4th fret, 4th string, and we're going to go down now to the 2nd fret. We're going to add this note, 2nd fret, 4th string, open. So you have 2nd fret, open. We're going to do the same thing on the 5th string, 2nd uh, fret, open. Same thing on the 6th string, 2nd fret, open. So now you have, you have that whole little box there. You can see it's just nut to the 2nd fret, nut to the 2nd fret, nut to the 2nd fret on the 6th, 5th, and 4th string. And then from here we can walk back up. So even though that's a combination of like a minor pentatonic scale and the minor scale, it depends on how you want to look at it, I just thought it made more sense to just start right off out of the gate uh, connecting something to a chord shape. Um, 
so that you can start to use it. You don't have to think about which pattern we're in and all of that. If you are following the pattern system, um, this would be pattern four of the minor pentatonic scale. And that's another way to think about it is this chord shape lives right in the middle of pattern four of the minor pentatonic scale. Okay, so the song then starts with this lick that goes three notes, very easy. I'm going to show you how to count it in and all of that in just a minute. But I want you to notice these notes. Now, these two notes were the notes that I already explained, but there's this uh, extra one here. Now, that's a blue note, and we're going to be using the blue note a lot throughout our lead in this. And I always associate that blue note uh, to Mark Knopfler's style of playing. He uses it quite a bit in very clever ways, and so I'm trying to get a little bit of that vibe going on. Uh, with this lead. But anyway, we're starting here on the 2nd fret, 4th string, and then we go to the 3rd fret, and then to the 4th fret. And the way that you count this in is this note starts on the 4. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? And then the next lick goes pretty easy to play. It's using the same notes that we just learned there off of this chord shape. But we're going to start it now on that blue note, 3rd fret, 4th uh, string down to the 2nd fret, open 4th string, and then the 2nd fret, 5th string. And this comes in, this note, or this lick starts on the and of 3 of the next measure. So we count it like this, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and... Now let me play that along with a jam track just so we can hear that in context. Okay, pretty simple. That's your intro. Anyone can do that. You can do that. All right, so hopefully you understand how to play it. That's the easy part, but more importantly, you understand where it comes from. So you can start to use these notes when you're playing uh, solos. Okay, now the next thing I played was... And that's what we're going to learn now. Now, these notes are coming right out of that little scale I showed you, which is off of this chord shape. I start with my ring finger here on the 2nd fret, 4th string, slide it up to the 4th fret. Index finger goes down on the 2nd fret, 3rd string. And then I go back to the 4th fret, 4th string. It's a nice little uh, set of notes because you can actually let these notes ring out together and get a harmony. Like that. And then I played... Now look at those notes. Those are walking right up that little scale I showed you off that chord shape. So it's 2nd fret, 3rd string, 4th fret, 3rd string, 2nd fret, 2nd string, I do a hammer-on between the 2nd fret and the 3rd fret, so... Then we're going to walk it back down, 2nd fret, 4th fret, 3rd string, 2nd fret, 3rd string, down to the 4th fret, 4th string. So all together we have... 2, 3... Alright, now let's play that along with the jam track so that we can hear all of that in context. Here we go. So when I played that 4th fret 4th string, you're going to notice that that note hangs on for a long time through a whole other measure of just almost silence. And that's just to let the song breathe a little bit. It's very slow, it's very somber, and you don't want to just start ripping into some playing right away. Uh, a lot of learning how to play and create interesting melodies is learning when not to play and learning how to sort of hold yourself back. Yeah, you could do some stuff there, but don't. Let the music kind of breathe for a minute. So then after I hold that note, the next thing that I played was... And this is using that same little scale that we just learned there. It's starting on the 3rd fret. This is that blue note. 3rd fret, 4th string. We go down to the 2nd fret, 
open, so you have, and then we're gonna come to the open fifth string and walk it up to the second fret. Now notice that note, that wasn't one of the notes I showed you, but that's okay, it's a passing note. So keep this in mind, this is another takeaway. Anytime you've got two notes that are happening, like that, and there's, there's one fret in between, 99 times out of 100, you can play that note in between as a passing note. So you go. Even though that note's not technically in that minor pentatonic scale, it does work as a, as a nice passing note. And so that's what I'm doing, is walking us back up to that note, which would be the B note. Second fret, uh, fifth string. So. All right. Let's put that in context. We're going to play along with the jam track again, building it up. That long pause there. Okay, now we're gonna play this again. Same thing. Now the second time, it's pretty much the same thing, but I started on the fourth fret, fourth string this time, and went. So it's fourth fret, fourth string, second fret, third string, fourth fret, third string, and we're gonna do that same hammer on from here. From here out, it's the same. That looks the same, right? But then the way that I ended this lick was like this. And I came into this spot. Now this is a this is where it kind of gets weird. It's almost like you're a little bit out of out of the your comfort zone in terms of uh, predictability. But I like that sound, especially that note. It's just a real nice clash. Uh, dissonance, I think is the word for that. Um, and I got this from Dave Rawlings. I'm a big fan of his stuff and he is the master at playing these notes that sort of don't fit but do. It's kind of uh, hard to explain. The way that I think about this, if you want to use this in other things, as a takeaway, look at your chord shape. We'll go back to our chord shape and look at these two notes out of that chord shape, your second string and your third string. If you were to take those two notes, you can slide them up two frets and it's always going to work with uh, what you're playing if it's a minor key. It just works. It's a little harmonized uh, third, and you could keep going. But I'm just gonna go up that far for today and not try and digress too far. But just know that now, you've got that. If you wanna use that off of a chord shape, play it off a D minor now. This is nice, you, so you can start to do all kinds of really cool little harmonies uh, in a minor key off of that. So that's what I did, was I slid up here, my middle finger is on the 5th fret 2nd string, ring finger is on the 6th fret 3rd string, and then I went... So I kept hitting that 6th fret 3rd string, giving it vibrato as I hit it. Came down to the 2nd fret 3rd string, and then the 4th fret 3rd string. And then after this 4th fret 3rd string, I played the 4th fret 4th string with my middle finger, back to the 2nd fret 3rd string, and then back to the 4th fret 3rd string. So it makes a little loop there at the end. Okay, and that is where the song switches to a G chord. Uh, but before we go into that, let me back up now and play along with the jam track. I'm going to rewind this here. We're going to play from the beginning up to that point. for a while. Now we're going to repeat. All right. 
Now you can see everything there has been over that B minor. Now the song goes to the G chord. Even though we there was a one spot where I played the G chord along with the B minor, now we're going to hang out on the G chord longer so it changes the feel. So now let's learn some licks off of this G major chord. So I'm just playing a, a G major bar chord. These three fingers are making up the E chord shape out of caged. And if you look at where your middle finger is here, that would be your third out of the, the chord, third note. And we're going to slide into that note. And then I'm going to play the, so that would be, I'm sorry, that would be the fourth fret third string. Then we're going to play the third fret second string. And then we're going to come up to the fifth fret second string. And then back to the note we started on, which is that fourth fret third string. So you have. Now that's a takeaway there. It made a little triangle there. But look at where that, what I played there off of this uh, major chord shape. So if we were playing an A, for example, you can use that in other things. And really all this is is uh, the G major pentatonic scale, pattern two, which lives right there off of your, your major chord. But I like to always kind of start it there with that third in the chord. Because it's easy, you can just know where your middle finger is when you play the chord. And then after that I went Now that's where we work in that blue note again, that Mark Knopfler sound. So we're going to do the same walk up, 3rd fret, uh, I'm sorry, 4th fret 3rd string, 3rd fret 2nd string, 5th fret 2nd string. And then we come up to the 6th fret 2nd string and slide up to the 7th fret. And then while that note's ringing out, my index finger goes down on the 5th fret 1st string. And then we're going to walk it back down. So you have that's the seventh fret second string, sixth fret second string, fifth fret second string, all the way down to the third fret on the second string. And then we're going to slide it, uh, do it, that final slide up to the seventh fret second string. So all together that part over the G goes like this. And then it goes. Okay, and then there's a little bit of a wait. And then I played. Harmonize six. Let's learn that. Very easy to play, easy to think about too. All this is. I'm playing the third string and the first string. Now I'm using hybrid picking. I'm picking on the third string and I'm plucking with my ring finger on the first string. You could use your pick on both of those if you want. But um, what are those two notes? All they are are the two notes out of this bar chord. So the third string and the first string. That's the easiest way to visualize that. Instead of playing the whole chord though, I'm just going to play the two notes I need out of that chord. And then I'm going to take and slide up to this position. So when I come up to here, I'm thinking about the G chord, which is using the D chord shape. Now this is out of caged, so you can refer back to EP. Uh, this would be 273, where I go over all the different chord shapes. But I'm just playing strings 3 and 1 out of this chord shape as well. So 3 and 1, 3 and 1. And then I came up, I pushed that up two frets. So now we're up on the ninth fret, strings 3 and 1. And I hit that twice, so I went uh, 3, 1, 3, 1, and then 3, 1 again. And then to conclude that lick, my pinky goes down on the 10th fret while I'm holding that. And by the way, I'm using my ring finger and my middle finger to do that. Ring fingers on the first string, middle fingers on the third string. I find that to be easiest when I'm playing that chord shape. My pinky then conveniently goes down on the 10th fret, second string. And then I conclude on the 7th fret 1st string. And I'll explain where that is in just a minute, or sort of where, we're, where we went. But we started here off of this G chord shape. So let's start from here. We have... Two, three, four, one, two. 
All right, so let me back up now and play along with the jam track. I won't play the entire thing. I'm going to skip ahead to where we go into that G part, but I want you to hear it in context. And you can see how spacey and dissonant that sounds in, uh, in, when you're playing along with the jam track there over that minor chord. But it sounds really cool switching to this G part. I think it's a nice contrast to, to start. You're starting to hear some major licks, but then it goes into the minor. It goes back and forth, so it's almost confusing to your ear a little bit, which just makes it interesting to listen to. Now, where are we here? Well, you, I'm thinking about the B minor pentatonic scale pattern one. That's probably the easiest way to think about this. So once we came up to this position, even though the song is hanging out on the G chord for a while, it still kind of resolves on that minor chord. Uh, and that and being here in this minor pentatonic scale, it allows me to do these minor pentatonic licks or m minor scale licks that work really nicely over this. Okay, so. The other way you can think about it is this G chord. That's the note we landed on, remember, which was the seventh fret first string. So you can visualize either this G chord, which is out of the cage system. This would be the, the C chord shape out of cage. Um, and so you can refer back to EP273 if you want a refresher on that. Um, or you can think about it as your minor B minor chord, and that would be in uh, pattern one. So either way, this note is in both of those chords. That's why it was a nice one to resolve on. Now, I didn't think about all that as I was doing it. I just sort of played it, but I knew kind of where I was going with my ear, I guess. Okay, so then the next thing was this. So now we're down on the second string, and we play the uh, seventh fret. I use my pinky to come up and play this, the tenth fret. And then I'm resolving there on the eighth fret second string. Now these notes are in the minor scale. So you, again, you can think about minor pentatonic scale pattern one. That's a great place to, to start um, because we kind of all know that one, right? And I go over all the, the five patterns in the blues lead course at Active Melody. So there's five different patterns. This is pattern one. Uh, but when you're playing the minor scale, you've got two extra notes that you can append to that uh, minor pentatonic scale. That's one of the notes which would be, so you got, which is the one we just resolved on. So that's why that note works. Okay, so from here, and then we have, and then I played that, which is a hammer-on, pull-off, hammer-on, hammer-on, pull-off, hammer-on. So I keep my index finger on the seventh fret, second string, I do a hammer-on, pull-off, and then I do a hammer-on with my ring finger to the ninth fret, third string. It sounds complicated when you first hear it, maybe, but it's actually pretty easy when you when you try and do it. And if that's too fast, you could always go just play the notes straight down if you want as an an easier way to do it. But I think it's nice to work these little little trills in every now and then. And then once we get to that ninth fret, third string, then I play I think the coolest lick in the whole thing, which goes. And you can hear that kind of, there's that blue note, and it's a nice clash hitting those two notes together. I just So again, minor pentatonic scale, uh, pattern one, if you're playing this note, which would be the ninth fret, third string, slide it up one fret, and that would be considered the blue note. So now we're actually getting into the blues scale. But don't think of it that way. Just think about these notes and how they connect to the chord shapes for now. It just makes it easier. Uh, so we're going to slide up with ring finger uh, from the 9th fret 3rd string up to the 10th fret. And then I do an upstroke and I hit the uh, 7th fret 2nd string. And then we go back to that note and we slide it down to the 9th fret 7th fret. So we have... Now from here, we're going to slide that note down 1 fret. 
Now, I want you to remember this because this is another note in that minor scale. So if you're playing a minor key song and you're real familiar with that uh, a minor pentatonic scale. Look at that note. You could just walk down one step there and you have this really nice note. This That's in the minor scale. That's why it sounds a little different. And then the same thing here. You have that. So, and I use that one, this one, all the time. So that's another takeaway. If you're playing off of this chord shape now, which is your E minor chord shape, you've got that note which is very, very useful when playing in a minor key. Okay, um, now once we get to that point, I'm going to put my middle finger down on the 7th fret 4th string and walk it straight up 7th fret, 8th fret, 9th fret. And again, that's that passing note. So remember, think about your uh, minor pentatonic scale pattern one. You've got these two notes. Remember what I said earlier? You can take any of these two notes and you can connect the dots. You can play that fret in between them as long as it's just sort of a quick passing thing. And that's what happened there. And then once I get to that note, which is the ninth fret uh, fourth string, I go ahead and bar with my uh, index finger to play the B minor chord. And then I hit the notes out of the chord. And that's what I did. Four, three, two, three, four. So, backing up. And you can see it sounds like I'm still playing part of the lead, but I'm just picking the notes out of the chord there at the end. All right, let me back up with the jam track now. We'll start it from the beginning of this G part and play it up to that point. Alright, so then the song goes back to the G one more time, and what I played there, again, this is why that cage thing is so important. Again, that lesson is EP273 if you need a refresher. But from this B minor chord, uh, the song switches to a G chord, and I played. And that's just a G chord, which is right here. I can keep my bar in the same spot there on the ninth, or sorry, seventh fret, um, first four strings. There's that B minor chord. So what I can do is, that's using the C chord shape out of cage. So you can play your G chord right here. So I'm gonna keep that bar, I'm gonna play the seventh fret, fourth string, hammer onto the ninth fret with my ring finger, fourth string. Play that note, which is behind the bar there on the seventh fret. And then my middle finger is on the 8th fret 2nd string. And you can see when I did the hammer on, I hammered on both my middle and ring finger at the same time. So practice that. Okay, so from the minor chord. And after I hit that note, I let it ring out for a while and then I went. So that's just walking right back to where we started. I was trying to get back to home base, which was that B minor chord. So I'm just walking from the uh, seventh fret to the fifth fret to the third fret on the second string, and down to the second fret. So seven, five, three, two, and then I played. Those notes are all on the second fret, so you have. Two of those on the second string, two of those on the third string, and two of those on the fourth string. Now if you're wondering what those notes are and why they work, remember that at the beginning of this lesson I showed you that little pattern off of your minor chord shape here. Look, those notes are all in that pattern. 
And so that's why uh, that's why they work. But it's a it's an unusual choice. You wouldn't normally I don't know if normal is the right word, but you wouldn't it's not a traditional thing, I guess, to resolve on that note or to end on that. You'd want to normally end on the on the B note because it's back at the B minor. It almost seems like a an uneasy feeling to land on that note, but I did that on purpose. And that's going back to the Dave Rawlings thing, which is a a dissonance, I guess is the best way I think I've heard him use that word. But that's what the, the feeling. It's just an uneasiness. It doesn't resolve and it creates a tension when you do that, uh, which is fascinating to me. That's what music is anyway. It's all about these tensions. So that's a lot of information uh, and I hope you've enjoyed this. I wanted to give away the, the whole, uh, at least the learning material for free. If you're a premium member, you can obviously have the tablature, which makes it easier to follow along with the on-screen tab viewer. But the biggest thing is the jam track so that you can practice playing all of this and get your timing down. I'm going to back up from the beginning now and play along with the entire jam track one more time. This is the slow version of the jam track, so the actual version is a little faster, uh, but not much. Uh, and then I will see you next week for something exciting and new. All right, here we go.